Welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at the Lincoln Link ISG, which stands for Intelligent Super Gateway. And there's a very good reason for that. The Lincoln Link boffids basically sat around a desk and asked, what do people want? Made a list, passed it to the engineers and said, go build me this. And while you're there, can you install Home Assistant 2? If you're looking for an all-in-one device of a gateway, hardware that can run Home Assistant and support six protocols, gives you a high definition screen and is focused on running everything locally, then you might just have found your perfect match. Well, nearly, and we'll explain why later in the video. In this video, we'll see what you get in the box, then we'll walk through the features of the ISG and talk through the overarching concepts. Then we'll show you how to pair devices into the ISG and Home Assistant, and then test by triggering a light in Home Assistant from the devices paired through the ISG and also from Home Assistant, and demonstrate the speed comparisons. And then we'll round up with a recommendation as to if you should consider it, buy it, or skip it. So let's dive on in and see if the Lincoln Link ISG lives up to all the buzz that are in the forums about it. You get a whole lot of hardware for not much more than you would pay for a Home Assistant Green. So that ticks the value box. And if you're one of those lucky few to pick up this on the Kickstarter, then you will be smiling right about now. First off, you get the ISG display itself, which is a 10 inch touch screen with high definition. On the back of the device is a barrel jack for the included power adapter. Then there is an undocumented micro USB plug that doesn't seem to have any function at this time. I've asked Lincoln Link to explain the purpose and we'll put it in the description once this is provided. Then you have a USB-A 2.0 plug that can be used for the Zigbee coordinator, but more on that later. The final socket is an SD card, which can be used for possibly additional storage. On the back of the unit is a jellyfin shaped power button next to the first of the two mounting options. The first is a keyhole shaped hanging hole for wall mounting while the second is a large magnetic pad that can be used with the included fully adjustable desk stand. And finally, a speaker grill for the inbuilt speaker. Just don't expect your favorite music to be pumping out of the rear of this unit. In addition, you get a remote control. At this time, the documentation lists this for basic navigation of the ISG, but watch this space as there are some amazing plans for this in the future. Might be a good time to subscribe and become a member to get early access to the video for when that comes out. In the accessories box, you get a power adapter and a 1.5 meter USB to barrel jack power cable. The power output is rated at 5 volts at 2 amps for a total power of 10 watts. So the ISG sips power. Remember this is powering the screen as well as the ISG, which in turn runs your home assistant instance. The unit is provided with a Zigbee USB dongle. This means that you can remove it and upgrade that component if required. Although I believe this will be included internally into the ISG in future versions. And finally you get a magnetic desk stand, which allows for pitch and rotation adjustments. And you get all this for $199 US. Although until the end of June, use the discount codes in the description for a further $30 off. First off is the 10 inch high definition screen with a resolution of 1280 by 800 that offers a viewing angle of 680 degrees, making it easier to view from the side of the screen, not just straight on. Inside you'll find a four core 1.6 gigahertz SOC, so it should be a snappy performance once tuned, but we'll test that out later. The SOC has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage which can be expanded via the SD slot. And that's the same as I allocate with my current production instance of Home Assistant, and it's never been an issue. Communications is provided by Zigbee 3.0, Bluetooth, and by Wi-Fi using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. So range should not be an issue. Although I would like to see support for the five gigahertz range to be included. Zigbee 3.0 is provided by the included USB dongle which plugs into the single USB-A 2.0 socket, but you can also use it with a USB hub, such as the Anchor 4 port USB hub, links in the description, to get multiple USBs. Now you can plug in your Zigbee, Z-Wave dongle or thumb drive at the same time if needed. Just remember, 
that it's better to use a USB extension cable and place this some distance from your ISG to get the best results and avoid interference. And if you pair this with the eHub, then you add infrared and RF to the mix. Integration is where the ISG really shines, working with Google Home, Amazon Alexa, HomeKit, Siri, Apple Shortcuts, the Link and Link app, and obviously with Home Assistant. The ISG natively supports Toya, local and cloud. You can automate in ISG or in Home Assistant, which gives you the best of both worlds. And if you keep everything local, then you don't even need to have a Nabucasa account, effectively saving you $65 a year. Although you can always do this yourself if you have the technical abilities, the ISG comes preloaded with Home Assistant already installed. Now, as this is a basic bespoke Home Assistant running on an Android device and not the official Android distribution, Link and Link has committed to release a new version for every major release that comes out of Home Assistant once the ISG goes into general release. And probably best of all, as this product is at the start of its development life cycle, the developers are actively working on it. So if you find a bug, Link and Link have committed to fixing it super quick, usually within a week. Try getting any other company to fix something in that time frame. Now the concept for the ISG is very unique, but I think it's important to understand it. Basically, you get two smart home platforms in one, and better still, they are synchronized with each other. If you add a device to the ISG, then it will appear in Home Assistant automatically. Likewise, if you add something to Home Assistant, then you can make it available within ISG, although the control of this is left up to you, to import which devices you wish to appear in your ISG. But I'll run through this later in the video. Like with Home Assistant, Zigbee coordinators cannot be shared between protocols. Well, this is where the Anchor USB hub comes into its own. By using the hub, you can also plug in the supplied Zigbee coordinator for use with the ISG automation platforms, but a second one for Home Assistant to use as well. You can also use a third USB socket as a thumb drive for such cases as backups or even firmware updates. For the purposes of our testing, we'll be adding a Sonoff SNZB04P contact sensor to the ISG, then a LifeX Globe to Home Assistant along with an AOTech door contact sensor, then creating an automation in the ISG and one in Home Assistant to turn on and off the light globe based on the state of the contact sensors connected to each platform. I'll also assume that you have followed through the quick start guide and got your ISG registered and working. We'll only be using Zigbee in this example, but the same principles apply to any other protocol that you can use to connect devices. Turn on your globe and power cycle five times to put into pairing mode. Now on your phone, go into your settings. Navigate to your Wi-Fi settings. Make sure you are connected to the 2.4 GHz network. Select the Wi-Fi globe in the Setup New Device section. Select your 2.4 GHz network. Press Next. Your globe will now connect to the 2.4 GHz network and flash once when connected. Open the LifeX app. Your new globe shall show up and can be controlled. Select your LifeX globe. Press Complete Setup. Select a location, in my case, Home. Press the right arrow in the bottom right hand corner. Create or select a new group. Press the right arrow in the bottom right hand corner. Give your globe a name. Press the arrow in the bottom right hand corner. Press Done. Your light is now available and can be controlled and will show up in Home Assistant. Now let's add the AOTech door contact sensor to the ISG. Remember, this will be using the supplied Zigbee dongle that's plugged into the Anchor USB hub. On the ISG, navigate to the Devices tab in the left-hand menu. Press the New Devices Plus icon. Select your communication protocol, which in this case is Zigbee. Now we need to select our brand. You can select IoT Other, which is all Zigbee 3.0 devices, or Acara. We'll select IoT Other, as Sonoff is 100% Zigbee 3.0 compatible. Now press and hold the pairing button on the sensor for five seconds, or until the red light starts to flash. Press Next Step on the ISG. The ISG will search for the Zigbee device, and once it finds it, it will ask you to select a floor and location. Now press Done. The ISG will save the device and display it on the ISG dashboard. Now let's do a quick test. Opening and closing the door contact sensor, 
displays on the tile in under one second. Now let's rename it so we know which door contact sensor is which. Select the door contact sensor tile. Press the three dots in the top right of the preview screen. Press device name. Type in an appropriate name and press save. And we are done. Now let's add the Sonoff door contact sensor to Home Assistant. Press the settings cog in the left hand menu. Select Home Assistant. Remember that your username and password entering into Home Assistant for the first time is admin admin. Once logged in, you will be dropped into an overview dashboard. Notice that in the overview dashboard, our AOTech door contact sensor is already shown up as it has been automatically synchronized. Now we need to connect our Sonoff door contact sensor to Home Assistant. But if you remember, our Zigbee coordinator can only be connected to ISG or to Home Assistant. So we have plugged in a Sonoff ZB dongle into the Anchor USB hub. So let's configure that first. Go to Settings, Devices and Services. Home Assistant should have done auto discovery and found many devices on your network already. But we'll be adding the Sonoff ZB dongle and using it with Zigbee Home Automations or ZHA as it's more frequently known as. Press Add Integration. Then search ZHA and select Zigbee Home Automation. Home Assistant will tell you it has discovered the Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 dongle. Select this. Press Submit. Home Assistant will now configure the ZB dongle to use ZHA. Either press Create a new network, or if you have previously created network as I have for testing, then select Erase network. Home Assistant will now configure ZHA network based on the ZB dongle. Once completed, it will report all the Zigbee devices it finds in pairing mode. Optionally give them an area or just press finish. Now our ZB dongle is configured, we can add our Sonoff door contact sensor. Press the blue add integration button in the bottom right hand corner. Select add Zigbee device, which should be the top option. Now let's put the Sonoff door contact sensor into pairing mode by pressing the top button for five seconds or until you see the red flashing light. The device will be found. Now leave until it's fully configured. Now let's quickly test this out. Opening and closing the contact sensor results in the sensor reporting open and close in the sensor attributes. So it's working as intended and very quickly. Now, although we have added the LifeX Glow to the app, it still needs to be configured in Home Assistant, even though it has been discovered. Devices and services. Now Home Assistant has found many LifeX Globes either directly or via HomeKit. Search for our Smart Home Australia Lite that is in the ISG group listed as a direct integration with LifeX. Press configure for this globe. Now press submit. Home Assistant will report success and even place the globe into the correct area. Now press finish. Now let's navigate back to the ISG dashboard and add the Sonoff door contact sensor and the LifeX globe that we added in Home Assistant. Press the back button in the bottom menu bar. Select devices, which is the light globe in the left hand menu. This will show only the AOTech door contact sensor that we previously added. Press the plus button in the top right hand corner. Now select Home Assistant from the available devices. All of our Home Assistant devices will now be shown. Select the Sonoff door contact sensor. Select a floor and location and press done. Now repeat this for the LifeX globe and rename the devices so you know that which contact sensor is which. For our final test, we'll create an automation in Home Assistant that uses the AOTech door contact sensor that we paired with the ISG to turn on and off the LifeX globe we paired in Home Assistant. And also two automations in ISG that use the Sonoff sensor that we connected in Home Assistant to control the LifeX globe that is also connected in Home Assistant. Now this video is already getting very long and I won't go into the specifics but it's super simple in the ISG to create automations. However, they are simple compared to the power of Home Assistant. So first, let's test the Sonoff that's connected to Home Assistant to control the LifeX globe that is also connected to Home Assistant. Opening and closing the sensor results in a quick response for the LifeX globe. Now let's test the AOTech sensor that's connected to the ISG to control the LifeX globe that's connected through Home Assistant. Opening and closing the sensor controls the LifeX globe, although not as quickly as the Sonoff that was connected directly to Home Assistant. So this proves that control across platforms works and without any issues. 
Now, if you love the idea of the ISG, but already have a Home Assistant instance on a different platform, then currently you cannot migrate to ISG. Link and Link tell me that they are working on this and that this functionality will be out this month and might be out already by the time you watch this. I'll update the comments below when this feature comes out. Another point to take into account is that this is Home Assistant running on an Android, but due to the hardware, Link and Link need to make a bespoke version of Home Assistant. So the version that I have installed is on 2023.11. Link and Link have confirmed that they will issue a new release of Home Assistant each month when the unit goes onto general release. So you will not miss out on any of those new Home Assistant features. And finally, the number of different types of sensors that can be connected at this time in the ISG is limited. Again, Link and Link have told me that this will rapidly expand in the coming weeks. Yes, I said weeks. The ISG is at the start of its development life cycle and there are bugs. Yes, they are getting resolved very quickly, but if you are looking for a rock solid platform, then maybe wait a month or two before purchasing. The Link and Link Intelligent Super Gateway, should you buy it, consider it or skip it? This is a difficult one, as it's not a single answer, but very much dependent upon what stage of your smart home journey you are at. For the Tinkerer, this is a buy it. The cross-platform integration and bringing so many protocols into a single machine that comes with a display means it will have you tweaking and tuning for many enjoyable days. Likewise, for the total newbie, this should be a considerate. No other platform offers a single stop shop for Home Assistant with a built-in screen plus expansion for growth into other protocols. For those of you that don't care about the screen and are committed exclusively to Home Assistant, then maybe it should be a considerate but I think you might find the lack of expansion restricting. Also bear in mind that this is going to be a very popular device and stock is going to be limited, at least at the start. So if you do order, you might need to wait for yours to arrive. This will reduce as production ramps up to meet demand. Links with discount codes to your new ISG in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a challenging one. And if you did, then consider hitting that like button, subscribing and maybe becoming a channel member to get access to early videos or member only videos. If I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one, I hope your ISG doesn't become self-aware and take over your home.